Copyright applies to the following verbal and written content. With the exception of the content owner, complete content excerpts and links may be used for nonprofit purposes only, provided that full and clear credit is given to the following names wherein Diary Single Woman, Diary of a Single Woman, and Miss Anonymous. Appropriate and specific direction to the original content must be used. All rights are reserved. Hi, I'm Miss Anonymous from Diary of a Single Woman, and you know me for my true erotic stories. But, in the spirit of Halloween, I have written a fiction story for you. I hope that you enjoy this story, and please let me know what you think. And as always, thank you for listening, and be sure to check out my true erotic stories. Without further ado, welcome to Halloween for Singles. Grande Pumpkin Spice Latte? Wow, that was quick. I love Starbucks specialty drinks, especially in the fall and winter seasons. There's just something about pumpkin, peppermint, and eggnog flavors that arouse my taste buds. But of course, I always have to add a few dashes of nutmeg and cinnamon, and today was no different. As I'm adding my favorite spices to my pumpkin latte, I spot a flyer tacked on the cork board in front of me. It's kind of an unofficial place to advertise your business, services, and events. Ooh, adult singles Halloween party, October 31st, live DJ, wear your favorite Halloween costume, food and spirits will be served, Must be 21 years old to enter. Cost at door is $25. Party is from 9 o'clock p.m. until? This sounds like fun. Let me take a picture of this with my phone and text it to Haley and Ava. I know they will be interested in going. It's a few days later, a little after 7.30 in the evening on Halloween. I found the perfect Catwoman costume. The kind with the patent leather look? I can't wait to have fun at the party. Food, alcohol, well, spirits as they called it, music and singles? Who knows, I might just meet someone from the party and boom, my next relationship starts. Besides, Haley and Ava have been encouraging me to move on since Alex and I broke up four months ago and... They're right. It's time for me to move on. Ava sent a group text message. Hey girls, at the last minute, my sister had to go into work. So, I will be taking Mason trick-or-treating tonight. Have a few drinks for me and tell me everything that happened tomorrow. I kind of knew that Ava might back out. She's often the backup babysitter for her nephew Mason since her sister is an on-call nurse. I can't blame Ava. Her sister pays her well for her last-minute babysitting services. I get a text message from Haley. Can you text me the address again? I deleted the flyer you sent me from my phone by accident. I'm leaving for the party in about 20 minutes, and I'll be using my cell phone GPS, so you know I won't be texting or talking. I text Haley the address and told her I will be leaving out around the same time. Haley replied, Thanks. And she sent me a picture with her black and green witch costume. Her text also said, If I get there before you, I will be inside near the food. I skipped lunch today and I'm starving. But text me when you get here so I'll know. Oh, and text me what you're wearing. I text Haley a pic of me in my Catwoman suit. I've never been on this side of town before. The roads around here are so dark and bumpy. No street lights and only an occasional car passes by. I should have researched this location a little more before hopping into my car. Damn! Come on! Not now! I yelled as my phone GPS started to go in and out of connection. 
recalculating. Make a U-turn in 400 feet. None of this looks familiar to me. I make a U-turn. As I continue to drive, I can see the orange-tinged moon in the sky. It looks so beautiful in the clear, dark sky. I rolled down my windows halfway to feel the cool air against my face. The outdoors greeted me with the smell of grass, flowers, and uh, oh my god, what is that smell? I quickly rolled up my windows. It smelled like something had rotted to death. I know it wasn't a skunk. It had to be a dead animal. Maybe a deer? This is the worst roadkill smell ever. A mix of boiled eggs, diarrhea, and burnt cabbage. Even though my windows are rolled up, the stench still lingered throughout my car vent. Did I hit something? No, I would have felt it. Recalculating, recalculating, goodbye, powering off. Oh shit, my phone went dead. Great. I opened my glove compartment to reach for my phone charger when I remembered that I left it in Ava's car last weekend when she drove us to Darren's birthday party. I need to pull over and get my gym bag from the trunk. I keep a portable charger in there just in case my phone dies out at the gym from listening to music while I work out. I pull over on the side of the road, pop the trunk, and with the car still running, I get out and walk to the back of the car. Ah! I yell. Something is wrapping around my left ankle. Oh my God, what is this? I can feel it wrapping around my calf. Now my thigh, it's tightening. I look down, oh shit, it's a snake. Without thinking, I grab my pepper spray from the corner of my trunk and aim it towards the snake's face. I spray until I feel the snake slither off of my leg. I run and jump inside my car, take it out of park and into drive and press the gas pedal all the way down to the floor and hit the gas. I'm panicking, I'm screaming as my trunk door flops up and down. I'm going at least 85 miles an hour with my high beams on the dark bumpy road. Boom, boom, boom. My trunk door flops up and down. I hear something and look in the rearview mirror. There goes my gym bag. I look forward again and I start to see a beam of light ahead on the right. As I get closer, I breathe a sigh of relief as I make out the gas station sign. Without second guessing, I turn into the gas station. I had never heard the name of this gas station before. Although the gas station sign was well lit from the road, the gas station lighting itself was very dim. I get out of my car and walk inside the gas station. Oh God, there goes that rotten smell again. I quickly cover my nose with the palm of my hand. I look around and I don't see anyone inside. Hello? Hello? I said muffled behind my hand. Finally, a man who looked to be in his early 70s walked out of a back room. He was balding with patches of gray hair. His scruffy gray beard matched. He was wearing a dark blue t-shirt that had tears and holes all throughout. His dingy blue overalls had blotches of red tinged mud. His calf high boots also had mud on them. I found the mud to be kind of odd because it wasn't raining or appeared to have rained earlier. Can I help you miss? If you're looking for cat food, we're all out, he said jokingly. 
As he laughed, I could see the dark brown tobacco chew in the side of his mouth. I replied, Cat food, um, no, I'm looking for a phone charger. The old man said, Oh, well, since you were dressed like a cat, I thought you might be looking for some cat food. And nope, we're fresh out of phone chargers, darling. You wouldn't by chance be headed over to that Halloween party in that old haunted house now, would you? Actually, I am, but my phone died and I was going to use it as a GPS to get there. I'm sorry, but did you say haunted house? I replied. Oh, yeah, I thought you knew. Every year, these college kids use my old granddaddy's house to throw their Halloween party. A long time ago, that house was auctioned off by the state. And one of them college kids' daddy is a real estate investor. Well, after he bought the house and fixed it up, he discovered that my dead granddaddy was still living in the house. Well, he was physically dead, but you know, his ghost just couldn't let that house go. I fought the state and tried to get my granddaddy's house back. But that old real estate investor had pulled a few strings and got the deal. My granddaddy's house had been passed down through the years. I come from a generation of butchers. We used to have the best farm products and butcher services this town had ever seen. That is, until all these real estate investors bought us out. Now I own and work this old gas station here. The old man's face then got very stiff as he said, But being a butcher is something I will never let go of, and apparently neither could my granddaddy. In that old haunted house, it never fails. Each year, someone ends up getting butchered. Rumor is that it's my old granddaddy. But... The police just won't shut the operation down. Greed, I guess. Them college kids make too much money using my granddaddy's old house. I guess it will take a whole slew of folks to get butchered at once before they finally shut it down. Anyways, darling, it's only about ten minutes away. You can follow me, and I can lead you there. Besides, a pretty pussy cat like you shouldn't be getting lost out here in these woods. Okay, so I have so many emotions running through my mind right now. The rotten stench in the gas station, the haunted house, and this old dirty man flirting with me, calling me a pretty pussycat. Everything within me wants to run out the door and haul ass home. But wait, what about Haley? I can't stand her up at the party. I can't even call her. Okay. Here's the plan. I will follow this old guy to the party, tell Haley everything about the haunted house, and insist that we leave the party immediately. Yep, that's the plan. I told the old man, Okay, I will follow you. He said, Great, let me grab my keys and we'll be on our way, little pussycat. As the old man goes into his back room, I noticed a red tail hanging outside of the door on the floor. What's that red liquid? Is that juice? Wait, is that a costume? Maybe a devil's costume. Is that blood? I start to slowly walk closer to the door. Now where you think you're going? The exit is that way, little lady. The old man said sternly as he walks out and closes the door. We walk outside and there's a younger version of the old man sitting in a wooden rocking chair next to the soda machine. Hey, I'm going to show this little lady to the party, son. I'll need you to run the gas station until I get back and keep an eye on things. As I approach my car, 
I notice that my rear tire is flat, I gasp. <gasps> what happened to my tire? Well, looks like you got a flat. This is horrible. I can't have a flat. I don't have a spare tire or a donut. Do you sell fix a flat here? That can temporarily get me to the party. My friend Haley, who was there waiting for me. No, we're fresh out of fix a flat. But Junior here can get you a brand new tire first thing in the morning. I'll tell you what. Why don't you hop in my truck and I take you to the party so you can meet your friend and she can drive you back here in the morning to get your car. I replied, well, what other choice do I have? Judging by the look of things, I'm sure taxis or even Ubers don't come out here. The old man walks over to the passenger side of his truck and opens the door. When I step up to go inside, the old man places his hands around my waist and pushes me up. Taken by surprise, I turned my head and said, What are you doing? He said, I'm just helping my pussycat into the truck. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Pussycats know how to climb real well. I might let you climb on me as long as you don't scratch. The old man laughed and slammed my passenger door shut. He starts driving us down the dark, bumpy road. The old man says, So, what's your real name, my little pussycat? I replied sharply, Well, it's not pussycat. The old man laughed and said, well, my friends call me Butch. I started to see cars lined up on the road. It seemed like hundreds of cars. We must be close to the party. As Butch drove us closer to the house, I could hear music blasting, see lights flashing, people in their costumes walking by, and Halloween decorations all over the lawn. The house itself was huge. The word house is an understatement. It was a mansion. It was three stories high with what looked like over 20 windows. I just want to get inside and find Haley. Butch started talking. Yep, here's my granddaddy's house. Look at it being so disrespected. Well, thanks for the ride, Mr. Butch. I will be back tomorrow to get my car. I unlocked the door and started to open it. Butch then leans towards me. I turn my face to look at him. His face is right in front of mine. I could smell his tobacco chew make its way into my nostrils. Butch said, Now, tell me this, pussycat. Even after Butch told you his family history about this here house, you still gonna choose to go in and disrespect his granddaddy? That's a shame. You should have stayed with Butch. I felt a chill roll down my spine. Butch was talking to me in the third person, as if it wasn't him. I didn't say a word. I just hopped out of the pickup truck, slammed the door, and ran towards the house. I paid my $25 and asked the doorman where the food was. I literally ran to the food area. I see all kind of costumes, goblins, wonder woman, leprechauns, a witch. Wait, a witch? Yes, that's Haley. I run over to Haley. Haley hands me a glass of wine and says, what the hell took you so long? I've gained 10 pounds waiting for you here by the food. 
and what's up with your phone? Haley, there's no time to talk. We have to. And before I could finish my sentence, the lights go out. It's pitch dark. The music goes silent. People at the party start to cheer. They start chanting, Halloween, 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 and making all kinds of animal noises. Maybe the lights going out was part of the party. But wait, the music stopped too. Suddenly, we hear an announcement. Stay calm, my ghosts and goblins. We will have the power back on shortly. In the meantime, go flirt with someone. After all, this is a singles party. The crowd laughs and you can hear chatter. Suddenly, screams are heard loudly. I can hear this humming noise. What is that? Where is it coming from? It sounds sort of like a lawnmower. Next thing I hear, someone yell, Chainsaw! Chainsaw! They have a chainsaw! The crowd panics, and you can hear people running. You can hear screams. But then, suddenly, the person would stop as you heard the chainsaw noise go in and out. I grab Haley's arm and tell her we have to get out of here. People started using their phone flashlights to find their way out. As Haley and I ran through the crowd, we saw a glimpse of bloodied arms, feet, intestines, and brain matter on the floor. Haley starts to cry. I grab her along as I feel my way down a set of stairs. I could hear glass breaking as people were busting out of windows to get out. The chainsaw kept humming, periodically muffled as it cut through bone and flesh. Someone else yells out, He has an axe! As we get to the bottom of the stairs, I step onto the floor, then immediately fall down. Haley falls on top of me. The floor was slippery. I feel something wet and warm against my face. Without moving an inch, I say, Haley, turn on your phone flashlight. When the flashlight came on, I was staring directly at a severed head. Eyes were wide open and I could see blood running down the cut of the neck. Ah! I yelled. Come on, let's go. Give me your flashlight. Haley passes me her phone and we stand up and slip and slide onto the floor. We see a door that looks like it leads to outside. I quickly open the door and we slide in. It was pitch dark, but the flashlight gave us some light. I wasn't sure if we were still inside or outside. Haley started vomiting profusely. Most of it fell on my upper back. I couldn't even think about that right now. I just needed to get us out of here. As we walked forward, I started to see our reflections. We were in some kind of mirrored room. It was hard to know if we could turn left or right or what. Everything looked the same in the mirror. Suddenly, the power came back on because we could hear whatever song the DJ was playing last blast throughout the house. There were more screams as partygoers saw the mangled and decapitated bodies on the floor. 
it was still dark in the room where we were. I started to place my hands along the mirrored walls until I felt a light switch and turned it on. <gasps> oh my god! Haley and I both screamed as we looked straight ahead through a glass door. In the room in front of us were naked bodies hanging upside down from their feet. They had been split straight down the middle. Large steel bowls were placed underneath each one to catch the blood that was drained from their bodies. Some bodies were bigger than others. Intestines unfolded and made the entire floor look like a bloody maze. Some eyeballs had either fallen to the floor or were hanging out of sockets. Tongues had been cut out and were laying in white plates next to the steel bowls. Oh my God! There had to be at least 15 bodies or more. I squeezed Haley's arm and said, Let's go back upstairs. We turned around. Well, hello there, my pussy cat. I told you, you should have stayed with Butch. Butch raised an axe and said, Welcome to my granddaddy's slaughterhouse.